kept talking about this damn ponyo days leading up to you actually getting it. Not once actually really explaining what the hell you're talking about. I'm like, ponyo? <laughs> what the hell is a ponyo? Hey, what's up? It's Tori Mathis, your host, and I'm here with the one and only Sean Mathis, founder of Miles Through Time Automotive Museum. That's me. What's going on? So, you know, a couple weeks ago, I made a purchase off of Instagram, something that I had seen ads for quite a bit. You're not supposed to do that. Oh, some people's ads are so great. Like, it's such a bummer that all of this stuff is coming out with the no tracking because I personally like to be tracked. I like to be shown ads of stuff that I like rather than like random weird ads that have nothing to do with anything I would ever I, want. I do it with the watches. I see I see all kinds of cool watches all the time. I talk about it all the time. Like they got to put money in there to to show me watches and I determine whether I like them or not. Otherwise, I probably won't see a whole bunch. Well, wouldn't you rather see ads for stuff that you actually like rather than well, ads Well, that's why I for... take I go the eth- extra effort to uh, let Facebook or Instagram or whatever it is, know that if it's an ad that I I absolutely do not want to see, I let them know. Like, this is not relevant to me. Well, Um, and just the same, if I see a product that I like that I'm like, ooh, I don't have time for this right now, but I might later, I will like it because that just alerts the algorithm that, hey, this person likes, has engaged in this ad, so you should show it to them more. And I know eventually it'll come around if they have their advertising right. I've also I've noticed like if you like like say you you look up something and you don't know how big of a company it is. And then next thing you know, you're back on a social media and you're seeing the ads. You're like, okay, I got a little bit of a budget to, you know, that that doesn't really even take a budget. It does not at all. No. All it takes is your stuff to be set up right. Yeah, yeah. If you have the Facebook pixel set up on your website and somebody comes to your website and then goes to Facebook or Instagram, if they have tracking enabled, which hopefully they do, um, then you're able to show them ads. And it's, it's I like it. I, you know, I think personally. it's more of a, a, a seriousness. You know, like when I talk sure. about the, the watch that, you know, like it looked shady. I, I don't know if it's a real company. Um, but if like, if it all just starts to connect and it, I don't know, it's, it's like that, um, I go back to that business that was in Livonia where she's like, ah, it's a hobby business. I'm like, what the hell are you doing a business for? If it's a hobby, Sean and I are not fans of people saying that it's a hobby business. Like that can't be some excuse for like, I I don't really try. It's a hobby business. You know, Uh, we don't open on time. We're out of stock. You never really know what you're going to get. You're doing it because you're passionate about it and you want to be able to make a a living doing it. Uh, Anything else and they're fooling themselves. So this product, though, that I bought, you could think that this was going to be a hobby business because it is the most insignificant-ish. Maybe this, this girl might be a millionaire. I don't know. I should probably look her up. I bought a Ponyo. Now, if you're not in the same Instagram, you know, algorithm as me, you probably don't know what it is, but it is literally like this. How would you even describe that? Like what it's, it's not a regular elastic. It's not a rubber. It's not an elastic at all. It's like a piece of bendable, um, shapeable. I should have brought it with me um, that you can use as a ponytail. It's like a thick, flat pipe cleaner. (laughs) It's so hard to explain. Anyway, I had been seeing Instagram videos. This is a very visual product. Like you have to see what this thing actually does um, in order to like understand what it is. But it's literally like it's a ponytail holder, but it's not like your regular elastic. So it's supposed to stay in your hair for a really long time. It doesn't crimp it back um, and it doesn't pull your hair and it gives you like a little poofy kind of ponytail. So and it also has, they have, she has a couple other little products. And the girl that's always in all of the ads is actually, I guess, the owner, according to all the stuff that they sent. And so she actually demonstrates this product. And like I said, it's one of those, like, you you probably should demonstrate it. Like, me explaining to you, like, it doesn't make any sense. But if you went and looked it up and you saw the video, you would, like, totally so get it. So then you kept talking about this damn Ponyo days leading up to you actually getting it. Not once actually really explaining what the hell you're talking about. I'm like, Ponyo? <laughs> What the hell is a ponyo? So I order the damn ponyo um, and I ordered like this other like thing to do like a hair bun. And so I ordered it and I was like, you know, whatever. Like I've ordered stuff from Instagram before. I've ordered a bazillion things online. However, 
this ponyo was possibly one of the greatest buying experiences I have had in a really long time. Okay. So I buy the ponyo and instantly the same day I get an ad on Instagram that says, we're so happy you decided to buy a ponyo. It's going to come really soon until like while you're waiting, let me show you some cool stuff about it and more demonstrations on how to use it. And like, don't worry, it's not uh, elastic. It's not going to stretch. So here's how to use it and goes through like these very specific instructions and kind of get you excited about that the thing is coming, the ponytail holder. <laughs> then I get an email that says, you know, I get the regular emails like, you know, your receipt and that kind of stuff. But then I get another one that says, just so you know, it's being shipped from Colorado. So wherever you're at in the United States, give or take, you know, how long it's going to take. Except, you know, COVID stuff going on, it might take a little bit longer. So it was like very nice that they actually let you know like where it's coming from and that it might take a little while if you're farther away from Colorado. Then I get another email and it's like got like here's some of our other products. And then I get another email that's just just so you know, here's how to use it. And it's like another link to another video. Are these coming back to back? Um, They're not all coming the same day. But within a week of getting them between ads that I saw that were very specific to after purchase, because I hate seeing ads after I purchase something to purchase it. Like once somebody purchases something, you can tell however you have your ads set up not to show the person that ad anymore. And in fact, you can have them see a different ad like the Ponyo did showing me like, now that you've purchased, here's the next steps. So I would say that I got between when I ordered it to when it actually came, which took about a week, I maybe got like five emails and then saw that, um, that ad. Then when it did come, it actually had like a little booklet inside that was very informative that said, you know, here's all of our products. Here's how to use all of them. Oh, the one thing that they did. And I told Sean, like, I have never seen anybody do this before. And I don't think anybody would take them up on it. But it said both in the packaging that came and I think the email that came after it already came, it said that if you are having difficulty figuring out how to use this little ponytail, they will do a one on one FaceTime with you and train you on how to use it. Which is completely unnecessary, and nobody's going to do that. Probably not. But the fact that they offered that... Absolutely. Like, they offered... Makes you feel like, holy hell, this company really cares. Absolutely. Like, they're going to stand behind what they just sold you, which makes you feel really good about that purchase, which is exactly what you want all of your customers to, to feel like. Like, I can't believe the amount of the detail that went into it and the attention. Like, they really thought about, and, you know, Sean and I talked about this since then. Like, okay, when somebody's going to be buying this product, like, how are they going to feel? Like, how are they going to feel while they're waiting for it? And they really just, like, met you at that, like, I don't know when it's going to come. Well, they let you know, and they let you know where it was coming from. And, and because it's a little bit unconventional, and because it's not, um, like, a traditional ponytail, like, I could see somebody getting it and going, like, what the fuck is this? You know, like they're thinking it's something they're not. And we've talked about it before that expectations are one of like wrong expectations are one of the worst things for your business. When somebody's expecting one thing and they get something totally different. Not that it's bad. It's just that it's different than what they think they're going to get. We talk about miles through time with expectations that every great once in a while, Sean will get a bad review, uh, usually not really bad, but I think the fact that it's bad is that they didn't look it up. They didn't know what to expect. And maybe they were expecting really big and super fancy. And so if you had that expectation, if you think that you're going to barber and you get miles through time, you'd be like, hmm, like not what I thought it was. And I think that expectation can ruin a customer's experience. So if somebody's expecting an elastic ponytail and you let them know multiple times, like it's not elastic, here's how you actually use it, which is different than a regular elastic ponytail, then once people got them, like hopefully they like actually looked at the stuff, um, that they wouldn't have that, um, you know, a mismatched expectation. Yeah, it's like um, right, if you've ever bought a car, right? And the, the place that you buy it from, whether it's uh, privately owned or a dealership or something, they, they tell you all these cool things about it, stuff that would make you get excited about this purchase. And, oh, this is such a great deal. Uh, but then if they leave out all the other stuff, you know, say it's a used car and, and maybe the, 
the center console's worn. It, it, it actually is going to need tires in a couple thousand miles. Uh, the clutch is a little loose. I mean, there's so many different things that they don't tell you that part of it because they're just they're selling you on how great this is, and it, it almost sets you up immediately for that that you know deep down in your stomach uh, awful feeling of regret and you shouldn't have purchased it, and then it makes it so that you wouldn't want to buy that you know anything from that person or dealership again. Where if they would have been like you know this is a used car, so there's a little bit of wear on the center console. Be aware, you know you may need tires in a couple thousand miles, or hey, better yet, the car needs new tires in a couple thousand miles we're gonna go ahead and put new tires on there for you so now all already you've changed the thought process of of them going wow you know they knew it needed this and took care of it and and you know it's a used car i expect a little bit of wear and tear it's not going to be perfect and then you get it and you're like this you is know, this could, is awesome they could always also instead of if they didn't want to put the tires on couldn't they say well we know it's going to need new tires so here's a 25% off if you come to us for them could, would, oh, would that abso- be absolutely. you know something like that that you you there's, know there's what's going to happen of, uh, rebates from tire manufacturers that they could literally just shuffle off and say, well, here's a rebate for 250 bucks on a brand new set of four tires. And they didn't have to do anything. I think it's important that whatever your customer experience is going to be, there's going to be things that are going to be different. There's going to be things that uh, they might not expect that I think if you can meet those things. And like you said, with the car, with the used car, that's a really great example. Well, that's what I'd be curious with that Ponyo. You know, did they do some sort of audit? Was there was there some sort of customer testing where it was, you know, they knew exactly what these these ladies primarily were we're going to complain about and and set the automated uh, emails up to address every single one of those issues, uh, potential issues leading up to the point to where you got it. You knew exactly what you were going to do. And if in that, at a, after all that, you still didn't get it. We'll talk to you one on one. You like, should take them up on that just to see what it's like. Maybe I will. Yeah. Like I want to talk to their. I'm going to talk to their marketing. I'm going to talk to somebody there because, like, it's such a simple. Like you would think it's such a simple product, but people sell simple products all the time and end up making a million dollars. Like, and I think they have four or five products, uh, like a, big, a regular pony and then a smaller pony and then the bun thing and then they have like these little jewelry clip ons that you can buy. And I really think that's all they have, but that's enough. And it wasn't cheap. You know, it wasn't a dollar ponytail holder. It was like 10 bucks, you know, for one pony thing. So they've put some money behind this and they put some thought in there that if you're buying a $10 ponytail holder that, you know, you expect some, some you know, good customer service from it. I know. I, I was really amazed by it. It was definitely one of the, the best customer service experiences that I've had. And it works. Yes. And the reason is, is the follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. And, you know, we talk about follow-up all the time. When you do follow up with people and you really have to think about what your customer is going through at those different stages and then let them know what's next. You know, so today the Ponyo people sent me something and said, you know, we also have these other products and then started to lead it, lead it on. Now, she can only go so far. Right. Like you can't, I'm because there's only five products or whatever. Like there's going to be a point that I'm like, Ponyo, I don't need you anymore. I have my bun bar. I have the ponytail and I'm probably going to unsubscribe. However, if somebody saw that on my head or if somebody asked something, like I would totally tell them to go Referral. buy it. Absolutely. Um, so I don't really know how they're going to take that further. And I'm a little bit curious to see, but whatever anybody's business is like, you have to follow up after the purchase because that's where you build the relationship and that's where you're going to get people to come back and buy from you again. We talk about the dog groomer. You know, my dog's nails needed to be cut. And instead of taking him to the dog groomer, because it's so easy to just forget about it, we waited until Sean's sister came and she cut the dog's nails because that's, oh, you know, she works for a vet and that's what she does. Um, but, you know, we went to the dog groomer. I've gone there twice. They have never sent an email. They've never collected my email to send an email to tell me I should come back. And it would be such an easy thing to do because dog nail cutting, dog grooming is just one of those things that somebody needs to come back every six weeks, just like haircuts. You know, since 
um, COVID happened, I, you know, that everything shut down, like a lot of the hair salons shut down. And I am so surprised that they are not my, the hair salon that I went to before is not hustling to get me to come back because I have not come back since then. So I was like, I'm not going to get my hair done. I'm not going to blow dry it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's. I have gotten two emails in the last, it's almost been like two years, year and a half. Mm -hmm. Uh, One was something very random. And then the last one was like, we're updating our, um, our system. Like when you act, when you get a confirmation, when you've made a uh, appointment, we're changing our confirmation system. So it might look different next time you make an appointment. Like it wasn't even soliciting me. Like, Matt, why don't you go ahead and make an appointment now? They're like, Tori, your hair's probably ratty. You should, should come in for a trim. Like that's crazy. Yeah. They have not done anything. And you know, maybe they're full. Maybe they don't have a lot of stylists that have come back. I'm not really sure what's going on, but I am incredibly surprised because I bet they could have talked me into coming in. I went and got a massage not that long ago. They have not called me or texted me or emailed me. And I know they have all of those things. They could have easily got me back in. Tori, you must be sore. You should come in. See, and the thing is, is most of these people probably go to the dentist, right? We haven't been to a dentist in years, well, I, I can't think of. Um, we okay. Let me, finish, let me finish the sentence. <laughs> that haven't had the online, like the email, like <laughs> for appointments. Like I, I can't remember the last time we went to a dentist though that didn't like they they schedule you. Like it, it is in their. Um, what am I trying to think of? Of like how they actually do their business is to then schedule you for the next one. Like that's their whole business plan. Their their process their business, right. is to actually uh, get you in and then ensure that they get you in again and get you in again. It, it's never uh, one and done because it's not how the dentist works. And and a lot of people go to the dentist. And, and they're experiencing this firsthand when they go in and they get their teeth clean and then they go out and they pay and they're like, OK, we'll see you in six months. Like they, I, I guarantee all these people that own these businesses have experienced that. And yet they forget it when it comes back to their business and it could totally apply. Absolutely. You could always any of those things that I just said, the dog grooming, uh, the massage, and you could either give them a free gift or uh, there's incentives that you could do to get them to book before they even leave. You know, because if somebody came in there once, as long as they didn't have a bad time, they'll come there again. Most people don't want to have to go do the research again. Like if they've had a good time, if they've had a good experience, they'll absolutely come again. Right. And like, I mean, you don't you really don't have to give them anything because what you're giving them is convenience. Which is what I want. Like, I don't want to think about it. Once, if, you know, the dentist hasn't screwed up um, and they're close and convenient, they're, they fall within our insurance policy that I don't have to pay anything extra. Why would I go anywhere else? Like, let me know when I, you know, I got to come back again. I think the reason that maybe you would want to give them an incentive is if they haven't come in. So let's say the dentist missed you, you know what I mean? Or the massage place or whatever missed you and didn't make that appointment. Then if they contacted you later... And you could even set it up that if you contact them once, you contact them twice, like on the third time, maybe you offer them an incentive. That way you could get them in at full price. And I think what people don't realize is that all of this stuff can totally be automated. Like you only have to like map this out one time and then you put it in email software, something like like we really like Kartra. I can put a link uh, to it down below. Um, And everything is just automatically goes out. Like once you put that email address in there, then you work out what the sequence is. There's all these little timings that happen. Like you wait so long until this um, and it all happens automatically. Like the Ponyo girl isn't sitting there going, oh, Tori email, you know, Tori ordered a Ponyo. Let me send out this email and tell her we're coming. It's coming from Colorado. Like all of that was already set up ahead of time. So these things don't have to be done right then. Because I know it's so easy to think like, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. Well, the reason you don't have time is probably because you're trying to do too much of this stuff by hand. Like so much of the stuff can be automated. It should be automated. Like there's no reason you should be doing any of this step by step uh, by hand. Uh, it, it just because it, it takes too long. Well, and you could say, OK, fine, Tori, you know, you're a marketer. You've been doing this since 2007. That's right. OK, so it's easy for me to say this is easy. You can automate it. Sean Mathis, are you a marketer? Um, not technically. 
Okay. So, like, Sean didn't go and have, she doesn't, he doesn't have a marketing degree. He doesn't, you know, uh, you do marketing with us. So I'm into you... cars and motorcycles and watches. <laughs> right. Come on, man. I'm okay. a dude. Because <laughs> <laughs> dudes aren't marketers. Uh, okay. So, Sean is not, like, a super designer, a super marketer. He has not done this for 20 years. However, did you set up your Miles Through Time sequence? I did. How long did it take you? Not long. I don't remember exactly, but it, it wasn't long. And I actually just did another one. Tell me about that one. Uh, for I auto- think people think this is for hard. For Automotive Museum not. Guide. You just, you just need to sit down and map it out, and you need to do it. So tell me about the Automotive Museum Guide one. So uh, Automotive, like, I'm not perfect, right? So Automotive Museum Guide has had a um, pop-up form and a, a newsletter sign-up form. And you actually grew a pretty decent little list. It's a good starter list. Yeah, I mean, it's been on there for a while now, and it just, I never did anything with it because I didn't really know what to do with it. There is a key here. So you didn't do anything with it, and you finally emailed after how long? <laughs> Some of the, over a year. Okay, and what happened? I lost all kinds of people, um, got a bunch of spam. And when I say a bunch of spam, like, uh, it was, I'm at point. Eight percent of the people that open the email, if they opened it, spammed it. One I think way it's or people that are on your list, not that opened it. I how, think it's on the total it? list. Well, it's yeah. the percentage of the total list. So point oh eight of the total list, not of this the people that opened it. I right, think. right, right. So they 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 said a spam complaint because if you don't email people, like they'll forget who you are. So. Having one of these sequences is a really great way to make sure people don't forget who you are. But this can be set up any time. Like, even if you have an email list that's an old list that you haven't, like, you got to just start, right? Yeah. Just like you just did. Well, and that was the thing is that I finally emailed them because I'm like, oh, you know, I got more ideas. Let's let's do a little bit more. So I, I send an email out. and I mean, these people, some of them, they, they have no idea what they're putting their emails and just things when well, a year's gone by. Well, and plus, they know Automotive Museum Guide, but may not know Sean Mathis. So right. part of the sequence, and, you know, we did this quite a while ago with um, Miles Through Time, is that somebody might come to the Miles Through Time website and sign up. They need to immediately know who Sean Mathis is because Sean Mathis is the guy that's going to be sending them emails. See, we didn't do that on Miles Through Time either, no, immediately but either. We, but, but you did do it. And I think that now that you have that, because the sequence that Sean put up for Miles Through Time introduces Sean Mathis first, because that's who the emails are going to come from, and gets them to personally like know who he is, like know your story and your why and all that stuff. So then they have a vested interest in like, I like the Sean Mathis guy. Or they're like, fuck the Sean Mathis guy. And they unsubscribe, which is fine. Right? Right, right. But at least now they know who he is. So now they get the rest of the email sequence that talks about the museum and why it's different and talks about Truett. And so then once Sean starts emailing them every you know couple of weeks, then they know who he is. So so it didn't happen right away, but that's OK. It is happening now. And so I think that's good. So you did set up the welcome sequence for automotive, automotive museum. museum guy. And I didn't do a whole lot of emails, uh, but I did. I did make it so that from now on, if they sign up to it, they are going to automatically get an initial email that lets them know, uh, obviously, again, who I am because I'm sending the email and then, uh, you know, kind of what to expect on the emails that I, I, I am now sending out for the guide uh, just to have a, a better open rate or give them an opportunity to go, well, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Goodbye. Right. Which is fine. That is. Yeah, it's fine if somebody decides they don't want to subscribe. So then you just have to figure out like what you want to email people each week or two weeks. I think every other week is probably a good place to start. I mean, it really um, depends on on your business. But if you wait too long, like a month, I think is too long. It's really people get lots of emails. People get lots of things that they do that if you only email once a month, it's really easy for you to. Yeah, you know what? I don't really need this and get get tossed away or people forget who you are. And then they end up spamming you, which is not cool. But it happens. Yeah, I think that's a, a big one because it's the same thing for, you know, what we talked about reviews on Google. It's like people don't always know what they're doing somehow. And, uh, you know, putting an email into something is is one of those things. I really feel like they they, they don't they don't know what they're doing. And next thing you know, getting some random email and from some random dude, <laughs> and it, 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 do, it doesn't make any sense. And it's easier to just say no. And it's gone. So how many emails did you put in your welcome sequence? <laughs> the new one? Yeah. One. one, just one. Cool. But you've, you're you going to do an email a week now, right? Yeah. 
So you are on email. You did number two this week. Yep. Cool. Yeah, and and that is, um, I I I built it, and it wasn't very great. Well, it, it was decent, right? You said it. Oh, the email. The, the email itself, the the layout of the email, and I did it again, and then <laughs> you went in there and made it a whole lot better. Um, but again, it's still it, uh, all I did was duplicate one to the next one, and then just change stuff. So. I created my own template, which was good enough, but then Tori made it better. And so now the next one I send, it'll be duplicated from her better template. And I'm just changing out various museums for people to visit all over the country. And, and it's super simple. You know, we talked about this in the car. I think that's a great way to do things like throw it together yourself and have it look really shitty just so that you can kind of work out what you need to then have somebody else come in and possibly fancy well, it up. And that's the thing is even if I didn't have you, I would have eventually kept making it better and better just by just normal tweaks. I mean, the same way I, I do it at miles through time, you know, I, I couldn't go in there and just make it exactly how it is today. It took small, ch- I'm going, I'm going to the museum. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow, which will be today uh, most likely a- and adding an entire library in, in the museum that I've been wanting to get done for a while now that, that uh, it's finally going to happen. Um, and it's, it's, take, it's taken over a year in this, in this new location to finally get it done. So, um, but I wouldn't have been able to, to do it at the beginning either. It's just, it's now finally lining up. But all those things are fine. Like it, it, not everything has to be done right this second and not everything has to be perfect right now. And I don't know if people are worried about things being really great. Like, good enough is good enough and doing it is better than it being perfect. It's never going to be perfect. And it's kind of nice that things actually change and you're able to tweak things. Um, It's not like you're printing something that once you print it like that, it is what it is. Like that's the beauty of sending emails or, you know, having your website or your email sequence is that you can always go in there and add a new picture or change up your text or redo the whole thing, like, or have somebody, you know, like me come in and actually design it. So it looks nice. You know, change a few things, somebody that has a little bit of an eye of detail or of design that can make it look a little bit prettier. But sometimes you just have to kind of like get your ideas out because it's hard to be like, Tori, design me an email. Well, what do you want your email? Well, I don't really know. You know, and you kind of worked (laughs) through that a little bit. I was just going to say, how many times have you had a client that, you know, it's usually a website or something and they don't have one, but they want one. Getting the context of the website that that the text and picture all and pulling it out of these people it's really hard um where if they would have just put something up there you know good enough to get them by and then they became ready they said well here's my crappy website make it better it would expedite and make it so much easier for the professional designer to then take that material and make it good yeah a lot of times you you gotta figure those things out and you got to like be able to have that brain dump of ideas. And sometimes it is better just to put something crappy together that at least you can kind of start to work out those details. Things don't have to be perfect right away. Um, But these things like email follow up, like they can make such a big difference. And so even though you haven't done it before, right now is a great time to get it started. And even if you just put together something really simple, you know, even if the dog groomer just put together, you know, a series of like five emails that just talk about different things of grooming that they did, give a couple tips. And if they said every six weeks, you should probably get your nails, your dog's nails trimmed and then said, why? Like, what could happen if I don't? Like your dog could break a nail. Have you had a dog break a nail? Like it's traumatic. <laughs> um, you know, it could get an infection, like all these things that could happen. And they're like, well, shit, I didn't think about that. Maybe I should do it. Like, All you have to do is think about it and start to just kind of outline these things and then you can keep adding to them. Plus, I mean, if they can automate the actual appointment as well through those emails, it's like all they got to do is check their schedule on their end and go, hey, yeah, we got customers coming in making money. Yeah. Didn't have to pick up the phone and cold call. Absolutely. Or, you know, try to wait for somebody to come in, wait for someone to come in or put out an ad in some newspaper or magazine or something. Like if you have that email list, if they had a slow day, they could just send an email saying, hey, we're slow. Anybody want to come in? You know, and it it gives people an opportunity to, you know, trigger their mind that like, hey, yeah, I do want to come in. I remember you. I like you. I I, I can do it today. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have that email address, you can't do any of these things. So, you know, getting the email address is definitely the first step. 
And then just getting a really simple sequence, thinking about what your customer is going to be doing after they buy from you, after they've come in, uh, giving them more information so that they keep wanting to use you, uh, give them information on like what's going to happen if they don't. Like that's another really great thing too. Like, you know, if you don't get a massage, what what could happen? If you don't cut your nails, what's going to happen? Um, and then you start to just, you know, uh, get, the, get them out there. Emails. For sure. Email automated. Do we? Absolutely. So we hope you enjoyed this episode and we will see you on the next one. Thanks.